Hi, I'm Jackie Stapleton and welcome to Atoll TV. Today I'm here to help you with understanding the requirements of ISO 14001. If you like this video and want to see more great content, then click the subscribe button and the bell icon. It costs nothing to subscribe and you can unsubscribe at any time. In this video, I'm going to cover clause 614 planning action, which is the final clause under the overarching clause 6 planning. I'm going to break this clause down and turn it into something you can all understand. You'll then be able to apply this to your own organization system and understand what the requirements will look like for you. No more guessing. Keep on watching as I can show you just how easy this is. Before we get stuck into the actual clause requirements, I want to point out that this final clause is all about actually doing something with what you've learnt throughout the rest of clause 6. This means the standard ensures that it's not just all warm and fuzzy stuff, but that you actually have to do something with it. Okay, let's get started. Clause 614 starts off with stating, the organisation shall plan to take actions to address its significant environmental aspects and compliance obligations, and finally, risks and opportunities identified in 611. I don't really have to explain too much here because the clause is already pointing you in the direction of the other clauses to refer to. They've made it really easy for you. Basically, what they're saying is that there would be actions required as a result of meeting the requirements of clauses 612, environmental aspects, 613, compliance obligations, and 611, general, which is a part of 6.1, actions to address risks and opportunities. Now, you just have to come up with a plan on how these actions will be implemented, which leads to the next section of this clause, which is point B how to integrate and implement the actions into its environmental management system processes. See 6.2, Clause 7, Clause 8 and 9.1 or other business processes and evaluate the effectiveness of these actions. See 9.1. I love this. This is saying that your plan and your actions are to be a part of your environmental management system its policies, procedures, and processes. Again, this is not something that just sits in the corner. These actions become integrated into your business and they become just how things are done around here. This clause has even provided the clause numbers that you can integrate your actions and processes into. These are 6.2, environmental objectives and planning to achieve them. Clause 7, support. Clause 8, operations. And 9.1, monitoring, measurement, analysis, and evaluation. To evaluate the effectiveness of the actions that are integrated into your environmental management system, you could use clause 9.1, monitoring, measurement, analysis, and evaluation, and even clause 9.2, internal audit, to monitor and determine the effectiveness. Even if this identifies improvements or non-conformances, that's what you actually want your system to do. Find where the gaps are and implement corrective action to always be improving. And then finally, the last sentence of this clause states, when planning these actions, the organization shall consider its technological options and its financial, operational and business requirements. The actions that you take should align with what resources and operations the business already has in place. Look at what you already have in the form of processes and systems and integrate your actions within these firstly. Also understand what the normal practice is in your industry while also considering your access to technology and your own financial resources. These actions aren't meant to send you broke. Your financial, technological and operational resources will influence the level of action you can take. Right, 
Now that I've explained all of these requirements, can you see more clearly how you could action and demonstrate this within your management system and what it might look like for your business? While there is no specific documented information requirement stated for this clause, the requirement of integrating and implementing the actions into other business processes indicates that as an auditor, you will find these actions within the system as a whole. If you are implementing a system, be sure to use what is already created in the system and embed the actions again. It may not be necessary to create something brand new. Thank you so much for joining me and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Auditor Training Online is a recognized training provider and we know how it works in the real world. So we are confident that we can help you to make a change in your life and join the most sought after profession out there. Go to our website and enroll in our training to transform your work and industry experience into a recognized qualification and career. And also, don't forget to subscribe to Atoll TV and leave a comment or question as I truly do want to help you to join the best career out there with me.